Uh, this is continuing on the nervous system. This is ne uh, neuroglial cells. So this is on page two of the handout. Um, the best way to remember all these is just to kind of imagine a picture. So I'll go ahead and draw something out for you guys. So we have an artery. Within that artery, we have all of our red blood cells. And then from the artery, we have the astrocyte. And what it actually is doing is it kind of wraps itself around the artery. And then it kind of just dangles off of it. And then down here we actually have the body. So this is the astrocyte. And then from there, it continues to kind of dangle or connect. To an actual a neuron. So we have a neuron. And stemming from the neurons, we have um, the axions. So we have our axions. Here's our neuron. And what this um, astrocyte is doing is as the red blood cells um, pass through the artery, it brings in oxygen and nutrients and I'll change colors here so it's a little bit easier. Um, and it pulls the nutrients from the red blood cells and then filters them. So when it talks about the blood-brain barrier, this is actually what it's talking about. This is the blood-brain barrier. And this is why when we talked about Alzheimer's and they noticed the chemical that decreases that actually causes Alzheimer's, the problem is getting the medication from inside the artery or inside the bloodstream to the actual neurons. And the problem is, is because when you introduce um, a medication, we'll use them as little white circles, the astrocyte filters them out and won't pull them in to actually repair. So that's where they're running into problem with um, Alzheimer's medications. Um, and then I'll have to draw another neuron to kind of demonstrate this next. These aren't connecting, they're just passing um, by each other. And sorry for the poor diagrams. And then in between all these neurons, and you just, you know, thousands, millions of neurons, um, the oligo, oligoden, oligodendron, and it kind of sits, kind of
kind of free floating in between them and it has a bunch of branches that connect to the axon axions but not to the actual neuron or to the actual site or anything else they just kind of sit in here in between them and connect to the axions and so this is our So we know the oligodendron is responsible for myelin repair. So what happens is if you have a foreign body inside the brain and it starts to eat at the myelin sheath, the oligodendron will send out chemicals from inside of it to repair uh, the damage that was done. Now it can only repair the damage, it can't actually get rid of the virus or whatever is inside damaging it. So from that point we have, and these are completely free floating, they don't attach to anything. This is uh, micro microglia. And this actually is um, just free floating and it just kind of floats around and it will actually absorb um, bacteria or whatever's inside. So it'll actually just kind of pulls them in and then absorbs. And so it's kind of like white blood cells in that re uh, regard. Um, and as far as the Schwann cell, if we were to take an axion, which looks like this, and we were to flip it, so we were looking right at, like at the end of it, it would look kind of like this. And then what the Schwann cell actually is, is imagine that is the cell. It actually rotates continuously over the axion. So it's rotating around. and it's building the myelin sheath. So as it continues to wrap and wrap and wrap, it's what's actually making the myelin sheath um, thicker. And then when it's damaged, the oligodendron repairs it. Um, we have the blood-brain barrier, the astrocytes are what are actually pulling the nutrients in from the artery, and the axions are what the message is being sent through. And then we have the microglia, um, There's an eye in there. Uh, and that is what fights the infection. Um, I hope that it helped you on neurological cells. Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know.